Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Unplugged. I'm your host, Daniel Wigfall, and I'm here with Sean Taylor Corbett, the talented Sean Taylor <laughs> Corbett. Thank you. Yes, and if you guys don't know who Sean Taylor Corbett is, let me just give you just a little, a little synopsis of his resume. The hit show High Five, Supremacy with starring Danny Glover, yes. right? In the Heights, you were sunny in In the Heights, yeah. right? And right now he's Frankie Valli in the Jersey Boys, the lead of Jersey Boys. Sounds pretty cool when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> he is incredible, awesome. And yeah, let's just dive in. Okay, sure. How did you get started in the arts? Like, when did that all start for you? You know, it's one of those things where if I look back on it, I didn't, it's not like I, at age three or four or five, said I have to do this yeah. for the rest of my life. It was one of those things where I thought every kid had an experience of growing up in the theater mm -hmm. or on TV sets or recording studios. My mom, she, uh, when she was 17, she was an usher at, at, you know, Lincoln Center and her whole life has been working in ballet, Broadway shows, films, so I kind of awesome. grew up in all these theaters and sets and played like G.I. Joes with, you know, <laughs> ballerinas and I thought every kid did that. I went to like the tech rehearsal Titanic on Broadway and I saw my mom's name on the St. James for Swing, you know, like directed by Lynn Taylor Corbett. Oh, wow. And I, but I took it for granted. Yeah. So, and my father was in the recording industry, he worked with Whitney Houston and and Mariah Carey, and I was like hanging out with Mariah, going to like Disney World, and that's amazing. When I was a little kid. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know. I was like, oh, it, doesn't everyone do this, you know? So no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone doesn't. Just hang out with Mariah Carey. Yeah, that that was that was pretty special. That's awesome. But it influenced me so much that I later on realized I didn't want to leave that world because. So as much as the performing aspect, which I love, it's also just the, I'm familiar with the world, I'm familiar with the people, that type of entertainment, creative spirit, you know, I love being around it. So yeah. that's kind of, that is what drove me to, to stay in it yeah. and to do it. Yeah. yeah. And since you've been around it for so long and just doing it, yeah. in it doing it very well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what would you say is some of the do's and don'ts? of auditioning yeah. or about the business? That's a great question. I think um, the do's definitely preparation. It's like I'm always practicing. Even if I have something, even Frankie Valley, like I've been doing it for nine months, mm -hmm. I probably sing through the whole show once a day because there are things in that show that I'm still grappling with on how to really master. Mm -hmm. So I have to, I put in so many hours of work into that and I think you have to prepare if you're dancer, singer, actor, always, all the time, yeah. um, especially for an audition. Some of the don'ts are, I think you have to let go at a certain point, you know? Okay. If you're about to audition and you're still thinking about like what your lines are or how you look or how you sound and you're having any kind of doubts right before you walk in, I've done it too many times to tell you yeah. it does not help. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Definitely that. Um, and what else? Let go of all mistakes. Like it's the second you make a mistake, let it go. Because I've forgotten a line, beaten myself up, and then I've forgotten another line, and it's just an escalating effect throughout the whole show. It's so bad. And on stage, you've forgotten a line. Oh yeah. Oh wow. How do you recover all the time. from that? You know, I usually tend to make lines up. I'm very good at that. <laughs> okay. So I just yeah. like make. I'm very good at just making lines up and getting through it. Um, yeah. But sometimes you can't make up a line, and so you, like, either I speak gibberish, mm -hmm. or I just, like, cut to another part of the scene, or whatever. I just, you gotta keep it going, though. Yeah. You know how it is. Yeah, When you make yeah, a mistake, definitely. you just gotta keep keep rolling with it. Definitely. Yeah. I've definitely done a dance sequence where I've completely forgotten the whole dance. Really? And had to completely just make up a dance on the spot. <laughs> really? So, yeah. It was a competition. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You just get so excited. Yeah. Sometimes you know you know it. And then right before you go on, you might have a blank moment, yeah, you know, yeah. where you have to come up with something. That to me is scarier than anything. I think if I forgot a dance combination, because it's like, you have to, how do people not know that you're, you forgot, you know? I mean, but I guess it's the same with lines or a song. 
I've changed lyrics and songs. I've oh, wow. switched verses. Oh wow. Yeah. And it's that's very scary, but to do that and when I forget what I'm doing dancing, that's probably the hardest yeah. thing for me to recover on. Yeah. But I'll make it look good, you know, I'll right? put a smile <laughs> yeah. on my face. Yeah, yeah. No, you're awesome. Like you're awesome. I saw <laughs> Jersey Boys and I oh, was cool. blown away. I love that because people don't know the show and they don't know what it requires. So when they hear it or they come and see it, especially good friends, you know, it's yeah. I love that. Because I'm like, you guys don't know, just wait. I know, <laughs> I was blown away. Like, I know you're extremely talented. Oh, thank you. But to see your vocal range and to see how fast you dance and then go straight into singing yeah. and hitting high notes just from the beginning, I was yeah. thoroughly impressed. Well, that the show has stretched me beyond anything I could do before. That's one of the gifts of the show is that, you know, you hope you can bring your skills set to, to any show, but then you want the show to take you to that next level. Um, and you have to learn on the spot. That's what's so crazy is that there's like 2,000 people out there and I'm, I'm mastering the show now, but there are moments in the show I haven't mastered yet and I'm still learning how do I do this and I have to do it in front of 2,000 people. So you're like, wow. let, me, let me try this tonight, let me try that. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I crack, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. you're singing those high notes and you're tired and you crack in front of all those people. What are you going to do? You know, yeah. everyone heard it. Yeah. You yeah. got to just keep going. Yeah. Um, but then the next show, it's like, okay, I, I made that mistake because of this. So on that approach, I'll take it like a little bit lighter. I'm not going to push as much, you know, mm. let's pull back some of the emotion so that I can have some of the vocal strength. So it's like, it's such a great learning experience. And you know, I think the hardest part about the role, but also the most glorious part, is that sometimes the show falls on your shoulders. You're holding the show up. Mm. And it's not even the audience necessarily that when I'm feeling tired or I'm learning something that's challenging for me, it's usually the cast. It's mm -hmm. usually because I want to feel, pr I want them to feel proud of the show. Yeah. And so if I'm out there doing my thing and it's not my best work, I'm not thinking, I want the audience to get the, my best work too, but it's because they know every they know what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. Right, right. And if I if I fall short, I know that they know. Yeah. So it's like that's what's hard, the hardest part. But when I also excel mm -hmm. and break through, mm -hmm. you know, I, they're very proud of me. So yeah, they're always supportive no matter what. Oh. But it's just that. You never, you never have a perfect show, so you're always trying to get that next. You're aiming for that perfect show, mm -hmm. and in doing so, you get better. Mm -hmm. But, but it's always like, ah, darn, I can't wait to get back on the stage because I, I know what I have to do the next time to nail that spot. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, for the few people that haven't heard about Jersey Boys, how would you describe the show? You know, it's it's the best musical out there right now. It's just unbelievable because not only are the, the hit songs so recognizable, mm -hmm. but the book of the show is so strong. And basically, Jersey Boys is a story of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. They're kind of a behind the music, VH1 behind the music um, story mm -hmm. about how they went from rags to riches. And these guys were tough, you know, kids from Jersey, didn't have a lot of money, came from very humble backgrounds. Um, and you know, you either went into the military to get out of the neighborhood, mo got mobbed up, mm -hmm. um, wow. or yeah, you literally joined a mob. I mean, that's how wow. you had to take care of yourself, or you became a star. And so this guy, Tommy DeVito, mm -hmm. who will say the whole thing is run based around him, had a lot to do with that because he wasn't necessarily the most talented guy, mm -hmm. but he knew how to get the right pieces together and create that combination. So. He found Frankie Valli and discovered that incredible voice, gave him a shot, put him in the band, knew he would be huge. And then through divine intervention almost, they ran into this guy, Bob Gaudio, who was the writer. Mm -hmm. And so the story goes through a progression of their lives and um, first from Tommy DeVito's perspective, mm -hmm. then from uh, Bob Gaudio's perspective, Nick Massey's perspective, and then finally Frankie Valli. And all through that, you're going through along these events that they go through the ups and downs from hits like Sherry, Big Girls Don't Cry, Walk mm -hmm. Like a Man. Yeah. And then you, you have a lot of tragedy in Frankie Valli's life. Mm -hmm. And then the band breaks up. And how does Frankie Valli deal with that? How does he deal with his personal life? Being away from home, 
getting a divorce, you know, having a huge loss in his life. And how does he overcome all that? And I think that's why people love it because everyone goes through tra tragedy in their life, some kind of challenge. And Frankie does it all and he still comes out on top at the end of the day, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he's a really tough, tough guy um, who sings really like beautiful songs. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic. They weren't like the Beach Boys. Right, right. You know, very sweet, beautiful songs, very mellow, kind of hippie. Yeah, yeah. They were like tough guys. Wow. You know, um, singing hits like Can't Take My Eyes Off You. And, yeah. And you see yeah, all that in the show. Yeah, that's so true. That. You yeah. do. You really do. The Beach Boys and the Four Seasons were the only two huge groups to survive the British invasion when the Beatles came in and wiped out everybody. <laughs> wow. And they were the only groups that wow. lasted through that British invasion. Well, I believe it. Yeah. Just the song catalog alone. Yeah. I was shocked when I saw the show how many songs they oh, yeah. did. Like yeah. some songs I didn't even know. And I was like, yeah. I love this song. I know. You know. I was the same way. And I know a lot of them. But I was like, wow, they did that one too, you know? Yeah. I saw that in a commercial. Or, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. So... What's the most challenging part of doing this show? Because your vocal range is amazing. And oh, when thanks. I was watching this show, I saw you go from singing to talking into yeah. singing a high note, into oh, yeah. dancing, into dancing and singing, like yeah. with no time to breathe. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah. you, what's the most challenging part of the show? I think that is it, is like the physical aspect of that, being able to switch all the time and still maintain that freshness and maintain that clarity of your voice and that energy and that passion you know you want every audience to experience that mm -hmm. sometimes you're more tired than others or you don't feel like you're at your best and I think the most challenging is to let go of thinking you have to be perfect and stop beating yourself up for a mistake you made or if you're not you didn't nail that moment you have to let it go right and right. and that to me becomes the most the hardest thing because I want to be perfect you know you can't be perfect but yeah. I want to like get the best show because it's not only for the audience but it, it feels good for yourself when you're really letting go and not worrying about that yeah so speaking of letting go oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you have any moments where you were either embarrassed or something just crazy happened on stage yes. okay yes I do actually um, there's two that come to mind one I was I was in In the Heights on Broadway, and I was understudying at the time the lead. Uh -huh. So his character's name is Usnavi. Uh -huh. And in the show, he's in love with this girl, Vanessa, uh -huh. and they have this bet. And basically, she won the bet, so he has to give her a champagne bottle. And she's leaving the neighborhood, and he's very sad, heartfelt. He's in love with her, but they've never really talked about it. It's right, been awkward. Right, right, right. And he's an awkward guy. So in the show, he's like, you know, um, he can't open the champagne bottle because he's such a nerd. Mm -hmm. So he's like, how do I, you know, how do I get this gold stuff off? And he's like, see, the twisty thing is broken, but I'm going to open this Dawn champagne. So he's like trying to get the bottle open. And it was like one night I was getting into it and I was like, yeah, I'm on fire. Bah, bah, bah. And all of a sudden the champagne bottle opened. The cork flies out into the audience. The champagne shoots out everywhere, like the whole bottle, because this thing has been you know, compressing for like a year because yeah. they had real champagne in the bottle. Everyone uses that one. Why did they not have water in it? I don't know. So yeah. it shoots out everywhere and, you know, the audience, I, they might know that it's not supposed to happen. They might think, oh, it's just normal. Right. But I don't have the lyrics to back up um, what just happened. I have the yeah. lyrics to back up that it, I can't open it. Yeah. So I had to like spontaneously rap and freestyle and switch lyrics around. And the other actress and I are just looking with like this wild look in our eyes, like what's gonna happen? Yeah. And there's champagne everywhere, all over my clothes. <laughs> but anyway, the dancers had to come on and do like a freestyle hip hop uh -huh. routine and wipe up the champagne from oh. the ground because otherwise people are gonna kill themselves. Right, right, right. <laughs> but everyone's looking from the wings. I mean, it was like a really heightened, exciting, scary moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was the biggest hugest like moment that I've had that was not supposed to happen on stage. Right, but, right. So do you have another embarrassing moment or anything crazy that happened in Jersey Boys, the show you're working oh, on right yeah. now? Yes, I do actually. Um, I, it was later on in the show, uh, 
but I had just only done like maybe eight shows and the lyrics were new to me still. Okay. So I was singing this song um, and basically I'm supposed to say, you know, if there's another man, go on and take his hand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm trying to say like, if, if it's not me, you know, if there's another guy out there, it's okay. Go be with him, yeah. baby. I still love you, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I told, basically what I said was like, um, something like, if there's another man, then go on and be his man. Oh. Basically, you know, saying like, if, if you're, if you're, even though you're a girl, <laughs> why don't you go and be his man? Which that yeah. doesn't make sense, yeah. does it? Yeah, All right. No. So I said that and as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was really embarrassed because you can't take it back. Everyone in the audience knows the song. Yeah. They know that I just told the girl to go be a man. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Frankie Valley, so I do it with like conviction, you know, like I didn't, I didn't make a mistake <laughs> at all. Um, and then another time I like flipped the verses, which is hard because there's people singing with you um, for harmonies. So they have to all of a sudden start switching their lyrics. Yeah. And you hear yeah. everyone like, well, oh, but, uh, you know, they like, Oh man, so you feel so bad because you know you're the cause of all that. Yeah, yeah. But you have to keep going. Yeah. You know? Wow, it's so crazy how everyone works together as a team, but also as a family. Yeah. Just to, if someone messes up a line here or if yeah. you spill champagne all over yeah. the floor, like they're cleaning up and the yeah. show must go on. Yeah, it's true. The show you must know? go on. That's the beauty of live theater. Yeah, that's so awesome, which is so different from television. I know. And Stuff like that. Yeah, they're different. They're challenging in different ways, mm -hmm. you know. But television film, it's like having to have that freshness and doing the same scene like thirty or forty times. Yeah. But then trying to find that magic each time. Well, what's going to be that ins inspiration for for that particular take? Even though you've said it like twenty times, and it's the end of the day, and you're hungry. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just different. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would you say is your favorite moment in the show? Um, I think it comes after a really emotional moment where uh, it's it's funny because it's it sounds sad, but actually when he's just he kind of hits rock bottom when one of his friends decides to leave the group and he has to really take control of the group, Frankie Valley, and, yeah, and take over and and then he takes charge and it's like the thing we talked about where. It's like you sing a song, and you go right into a monologue, then you go right into another song, then mm -hmm. it's when Frankie Valley takes over um, the show, and it's his part of the show, and I love it. As hard as it is, and yeah. you don't have any rest, yeah. and you go into singing, can't take my eyes off you, then right into another song, then a tragedy happens, and you have to have a monologue, and you're talking to the audience. It's like you're sharing your soul with the audience, Yeah, yeah. and I love that, because I feel like the audience is with you, and they're, hope they're lifting you up. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite part. That's awesome. The show just goes bam, bam, bam. Yeah. With singing yeah. and everything. Yeah. Is there anything you do before the show to help you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Like, I think I, I if I have a good two hours before the show, mm -hmm. then I have to eat a certain amount. I'm not kidding. Like, specifically eat a certain amount, drink a certain amount of water, vitamins. I have to, like, do yoga. Okay. Um, and I have to sing through a warm up of probably like in f 40 minutes, and then I wow. sing some of the songs from the show. Yeah. So I need like two hours. And also, you need the time to like mentally, spiritually, everything, mm -hmm. energy wise, get into the character, into the life of the show. Yeah. Sometimes I don't have that. Sometimes, mm -hmm. up until like 15 minutes, I'm working on. Did so and so get their tickets? And are they are they, are they in the audience? Are they okay? And I need to. I'm like eating food real fast. And yeah. Sean, you're on. You know, it's like. And then sometimes those are my best shows. Yeah, so yeah. Because it's just go go yeah, go. Yeah. Because you don't have time to think about it. Yeah. So yeah. You try to have some consistency, but it doesn't always happen on the road. Oh wow! I can <laughs> only imagine. Yeah. For me, I have to have. Maybe like tea if I'm singing in a show. Yeah. I have to have like tea before. Yeah. But I've heard like some crazy stories of yeah. things like people need. Like I have to have four red Skittles before. <laughs> and I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah. Whatever makes it work for you, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Whatever works for you. Yeah. Um, to get into it. Yeah. That's awesome. Totally. So you've been living you lived in New York. Yeah. And that's when you booked in the Heights, right? That's right. Yeah. And now you're living in Los Angeles. Uh huh. And that's where you booked the Jersey Boys. Yeah. Along with a whole bunch of other shows as well. That's true. Yeah. Right? So yeah. What's the difference between living in LA versus living in New York? You know, it's really funny because I was thinking about, I always think about that. I love New York, it's a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And my wife will laugh at me because she loves LA so much. Oh. And I tend to love New York uh -huh. a little bit more only because that's where I grew up and I know the city streets real well. And, yeah. you know, I'm a New Yorker, you know. No. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think the difference is in New York, you run into people a lot. Um, on the street and like oh yeah I'm doing this reading you want to be a part of it mm -hmm. so it's a lot more accessible in terms of when you're first starting your career out I think mm -hmm. but LA is a lot more appointment based however when you're in LA I think you're more inspired to put on a lot of different hats and be a producer be a director mm -hmm. be a writer mm -hmm. as well as an actor you know and you can change your uh, perspective of of what you can do and who you are. Yeah. Whereas in New York, I was like, oh, theater. You know, yeah. like, so focused on theater. And that's a big theater town. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't as inspired to try to write my own film script, which I have here. Yeah. And I came out here and all of a sudden everyone, there's like 90% of the population in Los Angeles is in the business. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a little bit more open in LA of creating your own projects mm -hmm. and seeing yourself elevating your career through your own work. Whereas in New York, it feels like so many people are ready to hire you. There's more opportunities for you to just be an actor in New York. Yeah. yeah. Whereas here, you're kind of forced to create your own work. Yeah, yeah. So. I felt that same thing with moving to Los Angeles from Chicago. Oh, yeah. I felt like L.A., it's that spirit, the free spirit. You yeah, know, you yeah. can do what you want and yeah. you go for it and you wear multiple hats, you know, to make things happen. Yeah. Um, it's also a city where... If you want to be a dog walker, you can have a million dollar business being a dog <laughs> true, walker. Right. Whereas in Chicago, it isn't as popular. Yeah. You know, it's that spirit of, I can, if I believe it, I can really do it. Yeah. You know, it's definitely the city of dreams for me. You LA. Know? Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, you're right. There's so many, creating your own business. You yeah. Know? That's huge. As, a, as, a, as artists, we have to do that. We can't just be one thing mm -hmm. because you want to be in this your whole life yeah. and you have to I'm finding have something money is a big part of this let's be honest it's like you have to have your creative side and your career but you also have to create a business that will provide the constant stream of income mm -hmm. um, almost like residuals if you book a commercial right, right you have to have that constant stream of income to support the creative aspects of your art mm -hmm. and that's what I've learned here Instead of just waiting for someone to hire me, you know, where's my next paycheck going to come from? Hire me to do this That's good. gig. You yeah. have to be an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. Like you said, have your own. There are dog walking companies, and I bet you the owner is also an actor and doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. But let's face it, you book a TV show, you have three uh, days on on the set, and then you have like two months in between. What are you going to do in those two months besides mm -hmm. just wait for the next TV show? Yeah. So, I think it's a great, you know, a great point that you brought up. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, do you have any tips for someone that's very new, trying to break into the industry, yeah. or someone that's just trying to figure their way yeah. into the industry? Um, you know, this is that, that's one of the hardest questions because it's so easy for me to say, get an agent, get a manager. But then right. the, the hardest thing is getting an agent and getting a manager. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and honestly, I'm, I'm in the process of having a new creative team. Mm -hmm. uh, or not just a creative team. I guess a, a team, a business team, which consists of a manager and an agent. And you go through a lot of them in your career. Um, so I have a great manager here in L.A. finally. I'm working on getting a, an agent. I'm, ha I'm having some... I'm taking meetings, mm -hmm. you say, in L.A., you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But I think when you're just starting out, it took me two years before I booked High Five mm -hmm. in New York, and that's my big break mm -hmm. uh, on a TV show. 
and before that, I was taking everything I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. If it was like a small show, don't think you're too good enough to do like something that's not paying, uh -huh. you know, when you're first starting out. It's like, yeah. oh, I won't do that, it doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be a student film that's gonna give you real footage. And you need that real footage for an agent to see your work. And if they like your work, they like the way you look, they're gonna take you on as a client. Then when they take you on as a client, they're gonna get you in that casting door. Yep. And then that's gonna be your first job. Then when you have that first credit on your resume, then another casting director will see that, then they'll, they'll give you a shot. So you have to do, take a risk sometimes of doing projects that might not be that good. Yeah. And don't use that material then. Uh, but I know for me, I did a show in a black box theater. Overall, bad show. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good part. Did it for free. Yeah. Long hours. Um, not the best director, not the best co-actors. Mm -hmm. One of them was. But I had a great part. I had people come see me in the show. And they gave me a shot at wow. something else. So I think that's the biggest thing. And being your own... Don't expect other people to do the work for you. You have to meet people that are going to connect you to another person. That Someone's going to help you out. It's not just going to be how great of an actor you are. You have to have people that help you out and take chances on you. Yeah. Um, I also would say, you know, like Actors Access, mm -hmm. looking online, going to open calls. A lot of open calls face a lot of rejection, but you're going to get a lot of experience auditioning, which is big. Mm -hmm. Before you get into that big casting office, you have to have fallen on your face like 50 times. Yeah. You go and you learn while you're auditioning. You have bad auditions, but you don't want to have a bad audition on Fox Studios lot. Right. Because you only get one shot. I've done it. Yeah. Not had a good audition. Ugh. And that person won't, they will not see me again. But I learned, I was, I didn't prepare, like I talked about before for mm -hmm. this audition. And I was a hot shot and I went in. And I thought I did okay, but I didn't connect with the casting person. And he still hasn't seen me after like three years. But it's going to take, you have those experiences and you learn from them. But it's going to take me getting another huge TV show or a movie and then he'll see me again. Mm. But you don't want to, you don't want to go through all that. Make sure you're ready when you see every big top casting person, you have to be ready okay. right out the gate. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's so good. One thing I always say is that work sees work. Yeah. So when you're working, most likely it may not be the project you want to do yeah. or your dream role, but someone's going to see you in that. And yeah. people love working with people that are getting out there, that are even just taking a risk and stepping out and doing something that they love or their craft. Or, yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's so true. You have to be working. That momentum is going to take you to the next thing. Yeah. So you mentioned that you're doing a musical, you're creating one, or...? Yeah, actually, uh, I co-created a musical with my mom and my writing partner from college. And it's uh, based on my Native American background, I'm part Blackfeet. Mm -hmm. Basically, when I was 17, or actually 15, my mom took me to my reservation in Montana, and it really opened my eyes up to my culture. And I... I I have always wanted to capture that experience in a musical, especially since I'm so, my background is in musical theater, a lot of it, and being on Broadway within the Heights and stuff. So we created this amazing musical that's gonna be like our pop music combined with native music oh, wow. about a kid who, not a kid, a man who comes home after being away for 20 years to reconcile his relationship with his father on the reservation and help preserve the Blackfeet language, which is being lost. Mm -hmm. So we want it to be the first Broadway musical that's like a Native American musical on Broadway. And I didn't tell you this before, but uh -huh. we're, we created the film for it too. So oh, wow. we want to do like a, a low budget film um, on the Blackfeet reservation and see kind of what takes off first and yeah. how we do both. Yeah. And I want it to be the next like five, 10 years of my life um, once the musical and the movie hit, I want to make it like, okay, doing workshops mm -hmm. for Native American kids, preserve oh, some yeah. of the money going to preserving languages, yeah. other Native American writers having their work um, produced on a big scale mm -hmm. to really get our voice to be heard, you yeah. know, out there. 
wow, how do you even start a project like that? If I'm thinking, if yeah. I have an idea for a musical, yeah. what's the first steps? Well, what were your first steps? I was lucky because, again, working with my mom with so much experience, I think getting with someone who could help lay out those steps for you, mm -hmm. the first step was creating a treatment, mm -hmm. you know, of the musical. So getting just the story that you want to tell and why and how you're going to do that. Um, and then we created the structure of it and we spent like a good three years, two years, just working on the, the story, the structure, the outline. And then once we had the outline and the structure, then we started doing the dialogue, hearing the characters' voices. A lot of it mm -hmm. was based on people we knew. You know, oh, so wow. we knew the voices because a lot of it, honestly, was my father, mm -hmm. like growing okay. up and, you know, some of the frustrations I had with him, mm -hmm. the father and the son thing. Right. I right. knew my own voice, obviously. My mom took on one of the characters because it was really like her. Mm -hmm. And then um, the kids were just like my cousin, you know, some of the stuff he did. So it was like a lot of our own personal family touch on, on it. And uh, it's... With, with a little fiction in there. That's awesome. Yeah, but then the movie was easier because we already had the story from the musical. Right. So we just adapted it into a more a screenplay format. Right, so are you writing the music for it? Yeah, I co-wrote oh, the music wow. for it as well, and the lyrics. And uh, that took a lot of time, but we had two readings, one reading in LA at Native Voices mm -hmm. and one reading in New York with a production company called Amas. Okay. And the audiences loved it. Even the, the Native Amer the native audience loved yeah, it. Yeah. And then the non-Native audience loved it. Awesome. So really reacting to it. That's awesome. So the big step now is coming up with the money uh -huh. to get it produced and the big producers. So we have some interest and in some movement with it. Um, but I'm hoping that we have a concert version in New York in January. We're working on that. That's at the Hard Rock Cafe, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that's in Midtown. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I wish you the best with that. Oh, like thank you. Everything. I know it's going to be huge. Thanks, Danielle. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's going to be huge. I can't wait to see it. And Thanks. once it's done and developed and on a stage and then on film. Yeah. 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 It'll be such a great event. And then we'll have to do another interview. Talk yeah. About yeah. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So what's next for Jersey Boys? Like yeah. the tour. What's next for you guys? Well, we're going to be actually opening it at the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles mm -hmm. on September 30th. Oh, so, wow. So, coming up. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, I'm really excited about that. And then we go to, like, San Diego, Fresno, wow. Sacramento, Idaho, Denver, Colorado, then Canada for, like, Toronto for, like, three weeks. Yeah. And then I'm done, pretty wow. much. I'm going to, after a year, I think I'm going to come back home and really focus on Distant Thunder. Working oh, on that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And pilot season in January. Right. Yeah. That's right. Pilot season. Have to, can't miss pilot season. Can't miss pilot season. <laughs> well, Sean, it was a pleasure having you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining the show. Of course. It was a lot of great tips, a lot of great experiences, funny stories. Yeah, yeah. It's so awesome. Well, it's it's been a pleasure and I appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in with us on Entertainment Unplugged with Sean Taylor Corbett. <laughs> You can find more podcasts, more interviews, more great tips on Prinlo.com. And remember, create inspire love.